longer. I'm a terrible concept of time because I've actually lived here in Memphis almost two years, and I keep forgetting that. But a few years ago, I stenciled a bunch of books with flowers and bumblebees and such. So this is my inspiration for today's glass art. I actually kind of traced over the bottom, the leaves and such, and made myself a little tracer. So we're gonna make a cute little flower. Now I wanna show you the glass I'm using. Hey, Teresa, hello, Jeanette, hello, Michelle, Rebecca, Rhonda, Rindy, Cheryl, Julie, Tracy, Eve. Hello, everybody. So this is yellow glass, okay? This is vase glass. Now I buy, I go to Hobby Lobby um, and look in their vase department when their vases are really cheap or they're like little candle holders that are made of glass because they're round and it creates little round pieces, curved pieces of glass that are great. I dropped that in my lap. That are super great for flower petals. So this was a clear vase actually from the florist. Anybody who's been following me lately knows I've been getting a lot of flowers from Hernando Florist lately. And this is one of their vases that was clear and I busted it up, nipped it, and sprayed it with yellow translucent spray paint to make yellow glass. Jennifer says she started boot camp two years ago and then joined the Shattered Circle. Love every minute. Thank you, girl. That's so awesome. Hello, Catherine. Roll Tide, Kathy. Hello, David. Hello, Rebecca and Felicia. So anyway, so I broke a bunch, I nipped off a bunch of pieces and then I sprayed them yellow. So we're gonna use that for our petals and then we're going to just paint on the rest. Okay, yeah, dollar stores, Goodwill, any like a uh, thrift store. I like to go like uh, the vase, one of the vases I recently bought was like a short little candle vase and it was like two bucks at Hobby Lobby. So anyway, I just bust them up. I just find them cheap. And what, where do I get translucent spray paint? Uh, Norma, you can, I bought, the brand I buy is called Tint It, T-I-N-T-I-T. -I -T. It's hard to find, uh, but I bought it on Amazon, but it's kind of pricey. But they have lots of different translucent spray paints at your local craft stores. So just look for something that's translucent, okay? That's not going to be a solid opaque color. So let's see. One day left to school and you're back, Shelly. Yay. Yes. Thank you, Jennifer, for letting her know that. Okay, so this canvas is already painted, okay? It's been sitting around for a couple of weeks uh, and it's got a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but I just kind of used a palette knife and it's just a really, I don't have the colors right with me, but it's just a really pale green and a really pale yellow applied with a palette knife in just a smushy way, okay? That's a technical artist term, smushy. Don't look it up. <laughs> yes, baby jars, anything made of glass is super fun to just crack and break. Wine bottles, clear wine bottles, beer bottles, all kinds of stuff. Anything made of glass, you can bust a move and make something pretty. So we're gonna make this on canvas with glass and let's get started. Don't forget to tell your friends we're here. You know what to do, sprinkle away, sprinkle away. And stay po stay uh, tuned for, with us to, on Wednesdays for uh, Wine and Wednesdays with Cindy. And we're gonna have a few more announcements coming up after the weekend as well. So I am going to turn upside down and fly like a bat down to our canvas so you can see what we're doing and let's get started painting. So let me figure out how to do this again. I always forget because I'm a crazy. Let's see, yes! Okay, so let's turn our camera down and I'm gonna wait a few seconds and let my iPad catch up. Thank you for the stars and for the sprinkles. Oh yeah, we don't need to see my lap. So let's go a little further down. <laughs> we don't need to be looking at my britches. 
Thank you for the sprinkles, ladies. Okay, so hopefully that'll be better. Let's see if we can give me one sec to straighten up. I'm gonna pull this a little closer. Yes, Gretchen, Wednesdays we're gonna be live right here on Art Shattered as consistently as humanly possible for me because y'all know I'm crazy. So uh, we're super crooked and it's driving me nuts. So uh, give me a second to get fixed. All right, I think that might do it. Forgive me for I am crazed. All right, that's good. At least my lap is out of the picture. <laughs> Catherine said, help. What do you need help with, baby? You're the helper, not the helpy. Okay, so I have gone ahead and um, uh, traced out the bottom half of this um, stencil that I used to, to paint this pretty book. So I'm going to go ahead and trace that onto my canvas. And I'm going to come up about a half inch because we are gonna add some green glass down here as well. So I'm gonna get a tiny piece of tape and kind of tape my tracer. Hey, Samantha. Hello. I was like, gosh, I know Catherine don't need some help. So I'm gonna tape that down. This is our little tracer and we're going to, uh, it was wasabi and butter yellow, Jerry. Thank you very much for remembering that. I've used way too many paint colors since then and have no remembrance. Okay, so I am gonna go ahead and just trace this out with my tracer. This is graphite paper from Hobby Lobby Art Department. And this is a stylus, which is gonna, it's kind of like using a pen with no ink. Yes, I'm in my studio. So I'm gonna just trace my stem and then that'll help us have a nice little way to paint without having to draw right here on in the public because sometimes when I'm under pressure, I don't do that well. I don't do well under pressure. That's probably not true. I probably do better under pressure, but it's just easier this way. And if you are a member of the Shattered Circle, look for this tracer inside the guides come tomorrow. Won't be till tomorrow because I've been here all day and mama tired, ready to go home. So tomorrow when I get here, I will trace or I will scan this tracer and put it in the guides for y'all. Deal or no deal? Okay, so there we are. I'm going to just do that just for my flower center. Oh, practice makes perfect, Becky, and palette knives are really, to me, easier than paint brushes because when you use a palette knife, it's meant to be messy. Hey, Dab, I love you, boo-boo. I miss you so much. Um, to palette knife art is meant to be messy and not perfect. So just go with the flow and do your thing. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to start with my greens and work on my stems and my, this is an eight by 10, Bev. I'm sorry. I failed to mention that. So this is an eight by 10 and I'm going to get two greens, a light green and a dark green. So this is the darker green and it is Folk Art Fresh Cut Grass. I'm gonna put a tiny bit on my palette. And this is Folk Art Hauser Green Lights. Yeah, it kind of, palette knives kind of free you from perfection. It kind of frees you from having, every, having everything, having to have everything be perfect. So I'm also gonna go ahead I put some white on there as well. Hey, Sherry. Hey, Tanya. Hello, Michelle. So I'm going to start with a skinny brush because I have these stems. So this is a, there's no number, so it's a really cheap paintbrush. It's just a long, skinny round. Wet that. 
And I'm gonna just go in and do my stems, and then we'll get a bigger brush to fill in our leaves and highlight with those. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the darker green, which is the fresh cut grass. And just go ahead and put in, and don't try to make your stem perfect. No grass stem or flower stem is perfectly symmetrical. So give it a little fat parts and skinny parts and crooked. You don't want it to be perfectly symmetrical because no flower stem is, okay? So we're just gonna fade into the background there. Then I'm gonna get this little stem And this little stem. Okay, I'm gonna rinse, and then I'm just gonna get a little bit of white on my same brush, just a tiny bit of white. I'm just gonna add a little bit of white here and there for dimension. It's gonna kinda of create dimension in your flower stem, so it's just not one flat, single color. All right, so now let's do our leaves. Let me get some a little bigger. Well, I got some tiny little leaves I need to do right here. So we'll do those before we change brushes. And we'll add a little bit of white on those as well. All right, now we'll rinse. Hey, Shannon, Lynn, Sandy, Leona, Janella, hello, how are you, Rindy? Okay, so let's get something a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go with the same style brush, but just kind of uh, fatter. And we'll wet that, offload water. And we're gonna do our leaves. So I'm gonna go into that darker of the two greens first and start at the tip and just Push down, wiggle, and paint in that leaf. We're gonna do all of our leaves that way. Start at the tip lightly, then when you get to the middle of the leaf, you can push down to help fill that leaf up a little. And Hey, Rima. So, fill that in. One more, and then we'll do some highlight texture. All right, I'm gonna rinse a little, get some of that dark off. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Sarita. I'm gonna go into my lighter and just hit one side just for a little extra color. And I'm just throwing it in, not doing anything too fancy. I'm gonna rinse and then we're gonna add some whites. And that, uh, the additional colors just help it look and feel more dimensional so it's not just flat color. So we're gonna go in with a little bit of white on my brush. A little bit more white. And hit the opposite side with that white. So that kind of helps give your leaves a little dimension. And we're also gonna um, add some little details to those leaves before we resin. So it'll help with the dimension as well. So that is our stem and our leaves. <laughs> hey Lisa, that's funny. And uh, now we're gonna work on our flowers. We have a couple of little baby buds. Oops, I see where I missed a leaf, a baby leaf up here on this little bud. So we're gonna add just a tiny little leaf here and here. We'll throw in a little white. All right. Barbara, we don't have text alerts, sorry. 
Uh, but we are going to start going live every Wednesday. Uh, so watch for that. So the yellow I'm using is Craft Smart. I think this is Michael's. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that Craft Smart is a Michael's brand. I don't know for sure. So somebody let us know. So this is Craft Smart Buttercream. Hey Gladys. You don't you girl, you get here when you get here. That's just all there is to it. So I am going to oh, I'll put that back on in a minute. The top broke off. It's Michael's. Thanks, Rima. So I am going to use uh, a little bit of my smaller brush again because these are like tiny little buds that we're going to uh, paint in. And then we're gonna use a bigger brush to do our petals for our big flower. So I'm gonna go into this yellow using my smaller brush and just kind of pull in Some yellow for that little baby flower bud. And we'll do this one. Got a little crazy on the paint down here. All right. Hey, Ann. All right, now I'm gonna use a little bit of white to add some dimension to those flowers. Just kind of right in the tips of that flower there. Let's see. And then we're gonna use our pen to detail those. And I may do, here's what I think I'm gonna do. Just for fun, just for giggles, I'm gonna hit the tip of that brush in that green and just add a few little dots of green in the tip of that flower just for fun. I don't know. Gotta have something. All right. Now we're gonna do the center of our flower and I'm gonna paint it white. Um, I'm just gonna paint it white and then we're gonna add a little more color and then we're gonna do some uh, petals. I'm gonna just a dab of that yellow. Because we're gonna do something special after we get our glass on. All right, so now I'm gonna take that bigger brush, that round brush again, get some of that water out of it, and I'm gonna go into my yellow, and I'm just gonna start creating petals, okay? So I'm gonna go into that yellow, I probably don't have enough. Start at the outside edge with the point of your brush, barely touching, and as you come towards the center, you're gonna press down your brush to get that fat bottom, fat bottom girl. So we're not even going to worry too much about how these petals line up because we're gonna be adding glass and none of that is really gonna show too much. So I'm just gonna throw some petals on. We'll give it a little bit of dimension too. Come in and add a few spots. We use all that yellow up. And that's good. All right, so now I'm gonna leave that yellow in my brush. Thank you, Barbara. And I'm gonna dip in a little bit. Oops, I'm gonna throw my paintbrush. I'm gonna dip into that white with the yellow still on my brush. Kind of blend it around a little. And I'm just gonna come in and add just some commas. 
<laughs> Basically, that's what it is. Just a few little swoops here and there. Nothing fancy, nothing too terribly artsy. And we're gonna leave that just like that. And we'll rinse. And what I really want to do is add some color in the center. Now I am going to add glass. Actually, what I'm gonna add in the center is bubbles because I want what's in the center to show through. But I'm gonna take a little bit of color and just dot it in to the center of our flower. So I'm just gonna use the end of a paintbrush, okay? Just the, the wooden end. And I'm gonna go in and add in some of the yellow, just dots, just dip, and then dot, dip, dot. Dot, 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 and I'm gonna clean that off and I'm gonna go into that dark green. Actually, I think I'll use the lighter green. Just dip and add a few dots. And I wanna do white too, but I'm not sure it's gonna show up very well, but I'm gonna use white. And then when we do our details, we'll add some more of that to, to there too. All right, and I see I have a dot of white there or yellow there, and we're just gonna move on and pretend it's not there. Hey, Betty, how are you? All right, so this is all, the leaves are dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of detail work to our leaves. So what I like to do to uh, detail things, just a really light, minimal detail, is I like to use this graphic needle drawing pen. Now this pen is archive quality, which means that when we add resin, it won't run and smear black ink all over our art piece. So I'm gonna use this archive quality black pen. It's a really fine tip, it's a 0.5 to just add some minor details to our leaves and to our flower. So I like to work in short, quick strokes. We'll add a little vein. So I don't like perfectly outline everything. I like to just add a few quick strokes here and there. So it's like stroke, stroke, stroke. And I don't even try to stay in the lines gives it a little more edge and personality if you do it that way. And I'll show you close up in one second. I'm gonna outline that flower a little. Oops, I got a little wet paint there. I'm gonna outline. All right, I'm gonna show you that. So if you can see close up what that little bit of uh, outlining will do for the piece. It just kinda makes it pop a little and makes it pop up off the canvas. So this is a great little pen for that, okay? Just make sure it's archive quality so that it doesn't run when you do resin. So let's do the stem. Just a few little strokes. We'll do a dot, dot, dot. Y'all know I love those. And now I'm gonna come in and just do a little outlining of my flower. Not much, because we're gonna use glass. But I do wanna just add a few strokes here and there. And you see how fast I'm working? I'm not thinking about placement. I'm not worrying about where, whether it's in line with the flower petal or not. Yeah, I do that too, Amanda, <laughs> because I'm impatient. But you can see how now that stands out really nicely once it's outlined. So I'm gonna add a few little dots. I probably should use black paint, but I'm gonna add a few little black dots in the wet paint again. <laughs> I'm gonna try to wipe that off and make sure it's still usable. All right, so that is all the painting we're gonna do. Hey, Joanne, hey, Alicia. Hey, Diane, Janetta. Uh, so that is our flower, basically, okay? So what we're gonna do now is add some glass. We're gonna use this tinted 
yellow glass. This was clear and I sprayed it with tinted sunflower color. And then we're gonna add a little bit of green to the bottom, maybe some vitrograph. I don't know yet. We're gonna play it by ear and see what happens. So the first thing I wanna do is just kinda place my petals. And I wanna use all of them so it's nice and beefy. So the really skinny ones, I'm gonna save for last. Like that one, that one, that one. So we'll use these big fatties first. And I'm just going to start placing them around my flower center. No um, pre-planning at all. <laughs> so we'll just kind of fit them in where they fit. Let's just do this. Actually, let's do it over here. Me, over here. <laughs> And you see, I'm not worrying about uh, that they fit exactly on the petals. It just helps give it a little bit of a dimensional quality too. So we're gonna fit in. See how I don't even worry about the shape of the glass? This is a really odd shape, but it's gonna work for a petal because nothing in nature is perfect, right? So we're gonna just stick it on there. Put this one in, and now we're gonna just start adding in some of the skinnier ones to really beef up that flower. So like this one here, and we have all of these we're gonna use. So I'm gonna throw this one in. Maybe, I think I want it down here. Down here, we'll add, this one's a little fatter, so we'll put it in here. Move that over a smidge. We'll add one here. And last but not least, we'll throw that in right there. So there is our petals. And, you know, like I said, I didn't um, try to make a particular shape, and I always use just whatever shape I get. Because as long as it's an oblong shape, you can uh, use it as a petal. It is no problemo. All right, so I need to put the top on this paint real quick. And what I'm gonna do for the center, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of glue in the middle because I do kind of want some of that to show through. So I'm gonna add, and that paint is still wet, so I'm not gonna touch it too much. I wanna add just a little bit of glue to that center. Don't add too much or it's gonna be a hot mess when we resin. And I'm gonna throw in bubbles. I'm just gonna add bubbles right into the center. And I'm probably gonna lose that. Hopefully when we resin, we'll be able to see that center again. But that's what I'm gonna do right there. Throw those, just a pool of bubbles right in the middle. Middle, yes, not middle. Okay, so let me put those colors together so I don't forget what we did. And we are ready to resin. So basically this was my inspiration. This cute little book was my inspiration. And now we've converted it to glass on a canvas. So I'm gonna mix, I still have a couple of art pieces on the side. So I think I'm gonna mix uh, I'm gonna mix a little over one ounce. I might, mm, 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 mm. I'm gonna use my cup. I'm gonna mix uh, three quarters and three quarters, which is one and a half ounces of resin. Let's see, three quarters. I'm gonna mark my line on my little cuppy and uh, Three quarters, we'll mark my line so we'll know exactly where to stop. And then we'll pour that into this cup and mix it. All right, I'm gonna put my gloves on because my bottles are sticky. Oh, I am, I almost forgot. Thank you, Diana. I'm crazy. See what I did? Right here, green glass. <laughs> I don't know what was going on with me. So I just have a handful of green 
We're gonna add that to the bottom. Gosh, I was losing my mind, wasn't I? Thank you for the reminder. That gives our flower basically something to um, sit on so it's not just floating in the air. Lord, I was about to mess up. So basically just a handful of green or whatever you want to put down here. And I was thinking about Vitrograph too, now that we mention it, but I think I'm gonna skip that because I do like the simplicity. Uh, I do, Rebecca, have those in Art Shattered. If I don't, uh, remind me because I have some in stock. I just might not have them on the page, so I'll check that as well. So I'm gonna put my gloves on now <laughs> and we'll start mixing some resin. Okay, Ugh. these gloves are tight. I have big hands for a chip anyway. These gloves are super tight. All right, so I use Art Resin. Most of y'all already know that. I use Art Resin exclusively. It is a two-part resin, hardener and resin. You mix 50-50. Um, I'm gonna mix my resin and then I'm gonna elevate my canvas. Okay, so I'm gonna pour three quarters of an ounce into cup one. I know they are fancy, aren't they? So three quarters of an ounce, which is way more than what we need, but I will, once we're done, I will tell you exactly how much we use so you'll know for your project. Now I'm gonna use three quarters ounce of the resin. Let me find my line. Pouring on my art piece again, aren't I? Y'all panicking? I need to move over here so it's the same. Oh, woo, I almost went crazy. All right, so we have three quarters of ounce of each. Thank you, Catherine. So what I'm gonna do now is take my little cup make sure there's nothing in it. And I am going to dump each part into my cup. So we'll start with this one. We'll scrape it all in. Make sure you get every little bit of that juice out so that you have a proper resin mix because if you don't, your project will never dry. You'll have a big sticky mess. So make sure you are measuring and mixing properly. So we'll ditch that and we'll pour this one in. Somebody and somebody actually gifted these to me. I think it was Brenda. Oops, I dumped some on the table. Did y'all see that? I think it was Brenda, but I can't swear to it. Um, but somebody gifted them to me um, probably a year ago when I was having a hard time finding gloves when the COVID first hit. So let me throw these away. And I got a little bit of resin on my table. I'm actually gonna scoop it up a little bit and then I'm gonna wipe up the mess. All right, so now it is time to mix. And most of you guys know you have to mix this for three minutes and you wanna mix it really slow. You don't wanna beat it to death and incorporate a bunch of bubbles. So what you're gonna do is just stir. You can start now, um, Catherine. You're gonna just stir slowly and scrape the sides so that you ensure that both parts are mixed together nicely. Okay, so scrape the bottom scrape the sides and stir stir don't beat stir for three minutes so while i'm stirring and mixing and scraping for three minutes i can answer any questions anybody might have about art shattered about the shattered circle about boot camp about resin about glass i'm an open book for three minutes <laughs> i'm always an open book but i'm I'm yours for three minutes. So if you have a question, let me know. 
I'm here for you. And just a reminder that we are going to start having a weekly live right here on the Art Shattered page on Wednesdays. I'm not exactly sure what time the live will be consistently, but we're going to try to get some consistency with that. But we're going to... Um, we're gonna test a couple of different times of the day or the evening to make sure that we get the best possible uh, reaction or the most people, you know, cause sometimes with uh, the time zones, it's hard for somebody in California versus somebody in, you know, the East Coast to join us. So we're gonna try to find a good, uh, fair time to do it consistently. And uh, no. Donna, and if you saw all of my clothes, you would know that. Even when it is uh, wet still, it's nearly impossible to get all of the chemical stuff out of there. So if you got resin on your clothes, they're now paint clothes. <laughs> Becky wants to know if I sell the glass strips like on the crosses. I do not. I did sell them for a while, but they're super hard to ship and super expensive to ship. Uh, the long glass strip, so I don't really do that anymore because I ended up having to replace so many at my cost that it really wasn't worth it. But we have, if you're in the Shattered Circle, we have lots of videos on how to cut those crosses. So, let's see. Tell you about Boot Camp. Barbara, Boot Camp is a course it's a four week course that uh, has four art projects starting from super simple to more advanced pieces. Uh, there are not only four art projects videoed step by step, but there's also a plethora of tutorials on how to tint glass, how to cut glass, how to break glass, how to tint resin. So it's basically a starter course for glass art and it's 127 and if you're interested you can email us at i'm not sure if we have the link up yet but you can email us at uh info info at the shattered circle.com and we'll get you all the information you need to make a decision okay it is a pre-recorded course which means you have forever access to those workshops so that you can do them in your time frame and at your convenience. When you flame the thing, do you keep it on the, on the side going up and down? Yes, when you hit it with a torch, Felicia, you're going to keep your hand moving constantly and do not let the fire touch your art piece. It's about the heat, not the fire, okay? Uh, Tanya, these came from, this uh, stick came from Amazon. It is actually a cosmetic makeup applicator, but if you want one, message me and I'll send you one because I have a 20 million. I don't really have 20 million, but I have 50 dozen. Not really, but I have a bunch. Okay, let's see. Uh, any more questions? I'm trying to scroll up and see. Uh, I can't scroll up and see. Time's up. Got it. The flower petals are not glued down. Um, are the gloves cute? I've tried. I've used them about three times. I think they're about. They've about used about used up all their. Let me find my. Your their usefulness because they were super hard to get on this time. All right, I'm gonna elevate my canvas so that. If I get drips, they won't run, they won't glue my piece to the table. So I'm gonna elevate my canvas real quick. And we're gonna start with our resin. I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna get a brush real quick and make sure there's no debris or garbage on my canvas. I move that, I'll fix that. So it's nice and clean. All right, so what I'm, I'm going to use my, my, the thing I stirred with to also apply my resin, and I'm going to start with the pretty little flower in the middle, and we're going to cover all of those glass bits. You always want to start with the glass because resin self-levels, 
And if you start with the outside edge, you're gonna end up using too much resin and it's gonna be pouring off the sides of your canvas and it's gonna be wasteful and uh, you know, resin is money and you don't wanna waste money. The canvas is an eight by 10 and the background is done with a palette knife with a pale yellow butter cream, I don't know, somebody mentioned it earlier, and wasabi. Just a pale, pale green and a pale, pale yellow, just in case you can't find those particular colors. So we're gonna cover all these glass bits first, and then we'll hit the outside edge of the canvas. I'm loving these flowers. I think we're gonna make uh, a couple of more flower projects because I have a couple of things in mind that I wanna do, but then, then we gotta start making some uh, patriotic 4th of July arts. I've got a couple of really cute projects I am eager to show you guys. All right now let's get the glass at the bottom. Make sure we cover all of that. So I'm just drizzling over the top of the glass. That enables the resin to hit the top of the glass and then fall down through the glass bits onto the canvas and that helps it glue itself to our canvas securely. Thank you, Lucy, that's very nice. That is my goal. Pretty good covered here. I want to take a peek at it and make sure. And I want to make sure all this glass is covered too. And now I'm just gonna spoon out, drizzle out a little bit. And there might be a half an ounce of resin left. So I think that one ounce, but I mix an ounce and a half, one ounce of resin will be plenty for this project. I don't think you'll need more than that because I have about a half an ounce left and I have plenty of resin on my canvas. There's no shortage of resin here. So one ounce for this eight by 10 is all you need. So I'm gonna scooch around the resin Get a little bit more to cover my entire canvas. And then we're going to hit it with some heat. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to look at it from a couple of different angles to make sure. All my canvas is covered. So what I like to do, I'm gonna set that aside. What I like to do is look at it from an angle. So you'll wanna kinda of just bend down towards it. Don't get your hair in the resin, but you wanna bend down towards it and just look at it across this way. And then look at it this way because I can see a spot right here. The light in your room should reflect off of the resin and you should be able to see any spot that doesn't have resin because it'll be dull. It'll be a dull little um, area on your piece. So let me see. I think I'm golden. Got a little spot there. So now, let me take these off. I think I've uh, worn these out, so I'm gonna throw them away. <laughs> I've used them about 20 times. So now what I'm gonna do is hit my canvas with a little bit of heat. And what I like to use is a 
propane torch, mostly because I have them on hand because I do large pieces of art and large pieces are better with a large propane torch. But you can totally use a heat gun, a small creme brulee kitchen torch or something along those lines. You can even use a blow dryer on high heat and low air. Uh, it's not gonna get out as many bubbles as the heat gun will or as a torch will, but it is sufficient. Don't stress yourself about tiny imperfections and bubbles in your art piece because nothing is gonna be perfect. No art piece you ever make is gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and torch my piece. I'm just gonna run my heat, not the flame. Don't hit your art piece with the flame, okay? And never hone in on one area. You want your hand moving at all times. Never stop and try to just hit one spot, okay? And keep that flame off of your art. It's all about the heat, not the fire. So here is our cute little art piece. Look at that. All from Free Florist Vase Glass <laughs> and an eight by 10 canvas. So super cute. And our little twin, <laughs> our little twin from here. This was my inspiration. So I hope you guys like that. I'm